It's December, and we're currently in the Northern Hemisphere experiencing some of the darkest, shortest days of the entire year. Around this time of year especially, a lot of people experience something called Seasonal Affective Disorder, which is usually abbreviated SAD. Some people also call this the Winter Blues or Winter Depression. This can be argued that they're actually not the same thing. You know, SAD, Winter Depression, and Winter Blues are all slightly different things. But for the sake of this video, we're going to call them the same thing because they often have the same causes and similar symptoms. One of the most prescribed solutions for seasonal affective disorder is the use of light therapy. And specifically, you want to use a bright light therapy device in the early parts of the day, so in the morning and maybe the early afternoon. One of the most popular brands of this, of this light therapy device and one of the oldest brands has been Verilux with their line of happy lights. Now these things have been shown to work. A lot of clinicians prescribe happy lights or a similar light therapy box and we know that people experience reduced symptoms when they use these types of products or at least many people do. But I wanted to look into some of the marketing claims that Verilux and some of the other players in the market are making because as a light and health researcher, I don't think that they're being 100% honest with people. Even though the product does work, I think that it's time that we advance the conversation around this um, light white light therapy because the 10,000 lux thing is not really true and I'll get into that in this video. So the first thing I'm going to do is walk you through the product. This is the Verilux Happy Light Lumi. I think I paid about $45 for it on Amazon, purchased with my own money. And it's an LED based seasonal affective disorder light. It's very slim and easy to use. and. Um, it was a pretty popular product on the market. It doesn't appear to be for sale right now for whatever reason on Amazon, but there are many similar products like it. Um, so this review is uh, still gonna hold up even if it's a slightly different model, especially if it's from the Verilux company. The Happy Light Lumi appears to be a mid-range product in Verilux's Happy Light product line. It's an LED powered Happy Light as opposed to the older fluorescent designs that still seem to sell a lot. So in theory, the light source should last longer. Once you've got the product set up, it's really easy to use. You just hit the power button on the top and then you can select between the three brightness settings using the touch button on the front. Okay, so you saw how the Happy Light Lumi works. It's a pretty simple operation, but now I wanted to get into some of the marketing claims that Verilux has been making around this product. Now Verilux, to give you a little history, they've been around for a while and they have been one of the pioneers in terms of healthy light. I think in the 80s or 90s, they introduced uh, the concept of full spectrum lighting. And my understanding is that these were fluorescent lights that had better color performance than other lighting that was available at the time. Probably not as good as incandescent still, but uh, better than most fluorescent at the time. And I think they sold a lot of them. I remember seeing a lot of these in magazines as I was growing up. But more recently, they've been selling these happy lights. It seems to be by far their top seller of products. Uh, for seasonal affective disorder. And a lot of people report them working. You know, they have very good reviews on Amazon and it's definitely the, the go-to brand, even with a number of other no-name type players in the market and even some name brand type players like Philips having tried to get into space and it seems like they haven't really succeeded. So the full spectrum thing is, you know, to start that claim that they were making about full spectrum you could argue that that is a bit of marketing hocus pocus. It's not really true. Um, you know, it's certainly not a full spectrum comparable to incandescent, but you know, maybe better than some fluorescent lights. Uh, but they sold a lot of lights for it, so uh, you know, that's fine. But the thing is, now that they're selling these happy lights, the one thing that you keep seeing them plaster all over the place is 10,000 lux, and sometimes it'll be 5,000 lux. So they'll say that the light source gives you 10,000 lux of light. Now, the thing is, we should define lux, and we should define another uh, light definition, uh, because I think that'll help at least clarify what's actually going on with these light sources. So I'm gonna go on Wikipedia, and a 
According to Wikipedia, lux is the SI derived unit of illuminance, measuring luminous flux per unit area. And then if I go to Wikipedia for the lumen, the lumen is the SI derived unit of luminous flux, a measure of total quantity of visible light emitted by a source per unit of time. Okay, so even to somebody in the industry, like these definitions <laughs> are confusing, uh, but you know, I can explain it in a more simple way. Basically, lux is light that is received on your eyes. So it's how bright light is when you're actually detecting it on your eyes. And lumens are how bright a light source is. So how much light is being sent from a light source. So lumens is light sent from a light source and lux is light received on the eyes. So if you go to a department store or any place, a hardware store, a place that would sell light bulbs, if you look on the packaging, almost every one of them is gonna tell you how many lumens the light produces. It's not gonna tell you how many lux you get because you can't define lux in terms of a light source because depending on how far away you are from the light source and depending on how bright it is can drastically affect the amount of lux that you're actually getting. So a typical incandescent 60 watt light bulb is usually gonna be between about 650 to 800 lumens. And you know, a 40 watt would be more like 400 to 500 lumens and a 25 watt might be somewhere around 200 to 250 lumens. Uh, I think you get the picture, but they're not gonna define it in terms of lux. So then why is Verilux calling these things 10,000 lux or 5,000 lux. This particular one, the VT31 Lumi, happens to be uh, a 10,000 lux light source. I looked on Verilux's website, Amazon page, nowhere could you find the amount of lumens that this thing produces. So I actually had to ask them how many lumens, how bright this thing actually is. And according to Verilux, they said it's 863 lumens which is interesting because I looked on a page for another happy light, which was a fluorescent version of the happy light. And that product was about 2,800 lumens according to an answer that they provided to a question that somebody asked on Amazon. So both of these were 10,000 lux light sources, but the LED version of the product is only 863 lumens, while the fluorescent version of the product is way brighter, 2,800 lumens. So how could that be? Well, this is the first reason that the whole 10,000 lux thing doesn't really hold muster is because, you know, like a different light source could be drastically different in brightness and that's gonna affect how you use it. So the other thing I asked in this email to Verilux was, how far away from this light source do I have to sit to get 10,000 lux? Because remember, lux is received light. And the interesting thing about lux is that light doesn't uh, follow a linear drop off. So it actually gets exponentially dimmer as you get farther away from it. And they basically didn't answer the question. They said you would have to sit between six and 24 inches. It would depend on the brightness of the light source. So it was basically a non-answer and it kind of disappoints me as a lighting nerd, although I understand why they're doing it. Um, so I, took it upon myself to measure it. I have a device, a spectrophotometer, which can measure a bunch of things about light, including the lux. And I actually measured at various distances and various brightness settings on this thing, how much lux you would actually get. And here are the results. So it turns out that if you want to get 10,000 lux or close to 10,000 lux, you would have to have this thing on the max brightness setting and put it only six inches away from you. So I measured at six inches away from the light source, the max brightness setting, 9,335 lux. But if I had it at the min brightness setting, it was 5,111 lux. So basically, you know, the 10,000 lux setting is only at six inches because as soon as you back up to nine inches away, which is still extremely close to this thing, it's like uncomfortably close to this light source, um, at the max setting, you're getting 5,218 lux. So you've already halved your lux just by backing up half of the distance. So you're, you know, from six inches to nine inches, you went from almost 10,000 lux to just above 5,000 lux. If you went to the low brightness setting at nine inches, 
2,846 lux. Now again, this is super bright, even at the low brightness setting and that close. So I would actually prefer to use the product much farther away and to use it at 24 inches, which is two feet away, um, I found that you would get 984 lux at the high setting and 541 lux at the low setting, at the 5000 lux setting. But this was, I think the, the low brightness setting on this product at 24 inches away, for me, I think that that would be the most practical use. Now, according to Verilux, you know, I'd have to sit in front of it longer. Now, for me, that's fine because I think that, you know, I can't sit in front of this thing that's super bright for even two minutes, you know? I'm sure it works for some people. I would be, I would have some concerns about, you know, potential long-term damage. We just don't know enough about this stuff yet to cause, uh, you know, how much damage sitting that close to a very intense light source is going to provide. But I would just err on the side of caution and it's gonna be extremely glary. You're not gonna be able to do anything else while you're sitting close to that light source. So I think this thing only starts to get practical when it's like two feet away from you. Oh, and another thing you need to do is they don't want you to sit with the light source facing you directly. They actually want it off to the side a little bit. So uh, like 10 o'clock or two o'clock if you're facing the light source, which makes sense. So, you know, I would put this thing, you know, at least two feet away, but it turns out that I'm not gonna get anywhere near 10,000 lux of light at two feet away. Now, the 10,000 lux thing still doesn't really hold up with this light source. So there were all these studies that were done, I think in the 80s and 90s that showed that, you know, like 10,000 lux would help with seasonal affective disorder. But again, that's really intense light, not very comfortable. Most people aren't gonna like it. And there's another metric that's come onto the play much more recently, and I think it's much more descriptive of what it's called, what, what's happening here, and it's called the melanopic ratio, or some people call it the MP ratio, which stands for mel melanopic over photopic ratio. Basically what this is, is it's how much circadian stimulating light you're getting, so how much blue and green light. So this might be an eye opener for some of you. A lot of people talk about blue light, but it's actually both blue and green light that stimulate the circadian rhythm. So you want this melanopic light in the morning and early afternoon, but you don't want the melanopic light as you get later and later in the day because that will effectively dis delay your circadian rhythm. So you only want it in the morning. You only want to use these types of things in the morning, or early afternoon. Now, According to the well building standard, the well building standard is a relatively new set of guidelines for building healthy buildings. And they talk a lot about light. I think it's uh, you know, becoming very influential even though we're still in the early days with this stuff. Um, they actually use the melanopic ratio to define some of their standards. And according to them, um, they're talking about equivalent melanopic lux, well, which is derived from the melanopic ratio. It's a measurement of light and its effects on the circadian cycle. So melanopic lux is the amount of lux that's going to stimulate the circadian rhythm. You can also talk about melanopic lumens, which are the amount of, uh, of the total lumens that are produced from a light source, how much of those are melanopic, you know, going to stimulate the circadian rhythm. So I used a, an Excel tool that I built. Uh, it's very simple that it allows you to plug in the spectrum of the light. So here's the spectrum of the LED light source that is uh, being used in this Verilite uh, Happy Light Lumi. And I actually measured this with my spectrophotometer. And you can see there's this nice tall peak of blue light dips, dips down at the green area and then it goes back up into red and then over to nothing. Um, so I plug the data from the spectrum into my Excel spreadsheet to calculate the melanopic ratio. And it turns out that the melanopic ratio for this product is 0.84. So of all, basically what that means is of all the light being produced by this product, 84% of it is uh, melanopic light, roughly speaking. So the well building standard actually defines how much melanopic light you need, or at least what they say based on their interpretation of the science. And according to Well, they say that between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. every day in working environments or living environments, 
you should have at least 200 equivalent melanopic lux. Now, if we go back to our table that we generated for the happy light, we found that we got at the lowest brightness setting at 24 inches, we got 541 lux of light. Now, if we multiply that 541 lux by the 0.84, which is our melanopic ratio, we get 454 melanopic lux. So already, even at 24 inches away, at two feet away, we're still getting more than twice the amount of melanopic lux that you need to get between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. Now granted, well wants you to get this light the entire time between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m., not just you know, for a little burst of time. But I think that you know, this is ultimately a healthier way to go about the problem. Instead of getting this really intense short burst of light, you, know, you should spread it out over time and get it over a period of few hours at a dimmer intensity. It's gonna cause less eye strain, headaches, and potentially even some unknown um, issues associated with using a light source that's so intense at such a close distance. So I like Wells' recommendations, and what that says to me is that, you know, I don't even need something that's as bright as this happy light to get enough light. And another thing I wanna look at is actually, there have been studies done, and depending on the angle of the light coming at your eyes, you can, it can be more effective at giving you circadian light. So you would need even less light to get the same amount of circadian stimulation. And it shows that from the, the flat horizontal plane and above it, you're gonna get the most effective light. Now the problem with this happy light is that it's designed to sit on a desktop and most of them are like this and they kind of face up at you. But what this research is saying is that you should actually, you know, try to put it somewhere above you. So like if I were to put it at two feet away and use the lowest brightness setting, it would be something like this, uh, you know, to give me the optimal circadian stimulation. Um, but this product is not designed for that. And it even has on the back, it just has a screw hole that you could hang it on the wall. So that could work, but it's not, you know, most effectively it would be angled down. So a solution that I would actually consider um, for, you know, people looking at this is you don't necessarily need to buy a happy light. Another thing that I would look at are actually these LED studio lights that I use. Uh, these ones are a little bit fancier, but you can find more basic ones. And what they let you do is you can mount the light on a light stand so you can actually place it above and put it on a freestanding stand without having to do something weird to get it to be in the right position. And that'll be, you know, a more effective way to get enough circadian stimulation in the winter um, in a more freestanding, easier to set up type of way. And I think, you know, ultimately, you'll be a lot happier about it. Now, are the diffusers on those studio lights quite as good as this diffuser? Uh, I would say no. I actually put umbrellas in front of my lights to soften out the light a little bit. Um, so that's a consideration, but I think you're probably okay with the light at that distance, in my opinion. So, you know, making this mountable kind of above you would be one thing that I uh, would like Verilux to change or somebody else to change. Another thing that I would like to Verilux to change is the LEDs that they're using. They're actually using a pretty typical LED in this thing, um, from what I can tell. You know, I measured the the light source and it was a 86 CRI, which is a pretty regular um, light source in terms of color rendering. And uh, R9 is 31, which is pretty good, um, but I've seen you know much, much better. Like certainly our bedtime bulb product is closer to the 80s in terms of R9, not 31. Um, and that's the red color rendering metric and people like light that is more red. Uh, but the real thing I think you know they should look at are these new LEDs that have come out in the past couple years which are filling out that band gap. So instead of the blue peak and then uh, like a drop off and then filling in the rest of the colors, they're actually filling out the, what they call the cyan gap um, in the lighting industry. And what that will allow you to do is that means you could have an even dimmer light source and still get the same amount of circadian stimulation. So, you know, why I think that that is so important is because, you know, the thing can be dimmer, so you get less glare, you know, it's gonna be more comfortable to use, um, but you get more punch in terms of 
giving you circadian light. So I think that that is something that Verilux or somebody else should look at. So the last thing I wanted to look at with this product is the Flicker. And according to Verilux, this thing is Flicker free. So for those who don't know, Flicker is a flashing of light and often it's not actually flashing that you can see. Usually when you can see a light source flashing, that means there's something wrong with it, like it's breaking, it's malfunctioning. But um, the flicker that we're talking about is actually usually invisible. So it's, fl it's still flashing, but it's faster than your vision can pick up most of the time. And um, what Verilux says is that the product is flicker free, but there are many, many definitions of flicker free out there. So I wanted to check for myself um, if it was actually flicker free. And one of the biggest standards on flicker right now is called IEEE 1789. And it is a definition of what flicker is safe and what flicker is unsafe. And my measurements showed that the Verilux Happy Light totally falls into the safe, um, you know, or no known harm effects uh, section of IEEE 1789. So at the max brightness setting, it flickers at um, 120 hertz. So 120 times a second, this thing is flashing, but it's it's not flashing. It's not like going from on and off completely. It's only go. It, it has less than five percent flicker, so it's only going from like 100 percent to 95 percent, 100 percent to 95 percent, 120 times per second, which is good. Like that's very good for a light source uh, these days. But if you dim it down to the 75 percent or the 50 percent, 5,000 lux brightness setting, uh, the light starts flashing. 32,000 times a second, 32 kilohertz, and it's 100% flicker. So this means that it's turning on and off, like completely on and completely off, 32,000 times per second. Now, again, IEEE 1789 says that this is totally safe. Personally, I think this could be improved in the future, but that is quite good as lighting goes today. So it's not something that I'd really worry about. If there was one thing I would have Verilux fix on this product, it wouldn't be the flicker. It would be the LED that they're using so you could use a lower brightness and still get the same circadian stimulation. I think that would be the big key. My personal definition of flicker, I think that that flicker is okay. The 32 kilohertz, 100% flicker, it's it's good. It's certainly good by today's standards, but I think we can do better. Um, so you know, future Happy Lights or whoever wants to make one from another company, you know, I would love to see um, using a constant current style power supply, which will provide more of a smooth illumination over time. So overall, what are my impressions of the Happy Light? They've been shown to work. A lot of people use them, like them. Anecdotally, people feel much better and clinicians are prescribing these things. So that puts a lot of power. And I do applaud Verilux for, you know, becoming the go-to name in the market, even with a lot of no-name uh, players cropping up into this space. I think that you're probably better off today going with Verilux than going with some of the other brands that are available, mostly because I don't know about the flicker in those other products, you know. Um, certainly it might be worth testing those at some point, but honestly I would just say, you know, spend the few extra dollars, get the Verilux product. You're gonna know that it's a pretty good product. I think Verilux could improve by changing the conversation around the 10,000 Lux thing because you don't really need 10,000 lux of light to get enough circadian stimulation to ease off the winter blues. And I think, you know, in addition to that, they could be using a better LED. You know, they're using a pretty cheap LED in here. I know as I make lighting products myself that that is just a run of the mill, regular LED. Um, you know, certainly something with better color performance or at least filling in that cyan gap uh, would be a huge thing. I think they could have better mounting options so you could mount it more above you instead of uh, below you because it's been shown that circadian light is more effective when it's mounted somewhat above you. And that makes sense because the sun is, you know, usually above you when you're outside. Um, it all goes down to our evolution. I think that you know, this is the right solution for a lot of people in the winter, but don't forget to supplement with fish or other sources of dietary vitamin D or supplemental vitamin D because you're not getting that in the winter and so many people are vitamin D deficient and that could be another cause of seasonal affective disorder. But, uh, you know, 
I would say Verilux overall has it mostly right. Change the marketing, change the mounting, and change the LEDs, and they'd have a totally killer product in my opinion. I've got some links down below uh, to some various happy lights. It looks like the one that I ordered is currently not available on Amazon. The links that I'm using are affiliate links. So I, if you purchase something after you click on one of those links, I may get, get a small commission. Um, but it would be much appreciated as we're really trying to grow this channel and um, you know really change sleep and other sleep related health aspects for a lot of people. So that would be a small thing that you could do to support me if you are interested in picking one of these things up is to check out the happy lights in the links below. Thank you so much and I hope you have a really happy day.